Hello everyone. Okay, so now that I finally got the carburetor kit after a week and a half of waiting, I uh, need to look at what it takes to take this carburetor off. So you'll need a 7 sixteenths and an 11 30 seconds to take the throttle loose. You'll need a 9 sixteenths and a half inch to take the gas line loose. You'll need to pull the PCV valve. You'll need to pull the, on the back side here, there is a uh, vacuum line for the vacuum advance. And then you'll need a flat tip screwdriver to loosen up the uh, clutch, or the choke cable and the choke uh, line off of here. And then 9 sixteenths to take the bolts out that hold it to the manifold. Once you have those things off, it should be fairly simple to uh, take all this stuff loose. And you need to loosen up the, uh, the air cleaner, which is, let's start with that. This is just kind of like a hose clamp that holds this to the top of the carburetor. All right, once that's loose, if you want to see, that's kind of what it looks like. We'll take this and we'll set this aside someplace. And we'll use the 9 sixteenths and the half inch to break this loose. All right, the fuel line is loose. Expect some gas to come out of here, but this has been dry for a while, so I'm not too worried about that. Then, you need to take the throttle loose. I can leave the linkage connected to the manifold, so I don't think I need to take this free, or take all the linkage loose. All I have to do really is take this nut off. And now that's pretty loose. And I'll just put this nut right back where I found it. So hopefully I don't lose it if I don't drop it. So that comes out right there. And I'll put that back on the linkage so I don't lose it. Now that's all free. Now all I have left is to take this vacuum line off of the back side, which is right there. And this PCV hose off of here. I probably should replace this hose because it looks like it's pretty brittle. Yep, it's just falling apart as I try to pull it loose. Looks like it's never been off of there since it was new. Okay, that's loose. Now for the choke. Let's see, here's the cable. So we loosen this up. Don't take that screw all the way out, just loosen it. So that comes loose. And then Let's see if I can find what loosens it up on the back side. Looks like there is something right in there. I need to get up on top of it where I can see a little better. Okay. I think right here, ah, right here. This is just dirty. So I loosen that up. 
hopefully this will come out. All right, now I have to, oh, sorry, there goes the heater. It's starting to warm up in here. Okay, that choke cable. Is there a nut underneath there? Yeah, there's looks like there's a flat nut underneath there that's holding that. But that should pull out of there. Ah, there it goes. Ah, got it. Okay, now I need the 916s and break these loose. Oh, these aren't too hard to break loose. Now that one wasn't. Then there's one on the back side. And that one's coming loose fairly easy too. So I'm going to take those out. Once I have that loose, it should be free, I believe. All right, there's one bolt. Other bolt right there and now that should be free there we go carburetor is loose all right that's how you take the carburetor off of a 64 slant 6 225 one barrel Carter BBS all right see you over at the bench okay uh, how's everybody doing uh, now sitting at the bench with the carburetor first thing I'm gonna do is Locate the parts of it. Uh, so I'm looking at the manual. I've never tore a carburetor apart before But uh, I do have the manual and it says this is the choke valve This is the choke lever This is the fast idle rod this is the fast idle cam. This is the fast idle screw. This is the throttle lever. This is the idle speed screw, curb idle. This you just say this is the rod in the center hole of lever. I don't know what the heck they're talking about there. There's something. Oh, right here. This thing here is supposed to be running to the center hole of that lever. Uh, the bottom part here is the throttle body. I'm going to turn this a little bit so you can see. Uh, this is the idle mixture screw. This is the accelerator pump rod. This is the vacuum advance tube fitting. This is the main body. And this is the accelerator pump arm. This is, so that means if that's the accelerator pump arm, this must be the accelerator pump underneath this thing, which is the thing you suspect is the biggest problem, right? Okay, servicing the carburetor. Often the carburetor is blamed for a great variety of trouble, which is classed as poor truck performance. Therefore, be definitely sure that the trouble is not located elsewhere before disassembling the carburetor. When overhauling the carburetor, several items of importance should be observed to assure a good job. The carburetor must be completely disassembled 
All parts except the choke diaphragm, if so equipped, should be cleaned in a suitable solvent, then inspected for damage or wear. And since we don't have a choke diagram, because this is a manual choke, we don't need to worry about that. All parts except the choke diaphragm, let's say, use air pressure only to clean the various orifices or channels. And replace questionable parts with new ones. When checking parts removed from the carburetor, it is at times difficult to be sure they are satisfactory for further service. It is therefore recommended that in such case new parts be installed. So that's where I got the carburetor kit. Disassembling the carburetor. To disassemble the carburetor for cleaning over the or overhaul, we figure, refer to figures two, one and two and proceed as follows. So, okay, they're pointing out a few more things here. So let's look at this. So in figure, wait, that's figure three. So figure one and two, I've, we already went through one and two because that was naming the parts that we were looking at. Okay, place the car carburetor on our assembly repair block. Yeah, I'm just going to do it right here. Uh, remove hairpin clip and disengage the accelerator pump operating rod. So the accelerator pump operating rod, let's look and see, what is that? That is this one here, and there's a little bitty clip right down in here holding that in place. Right there. So we're going to take that little bitty clip and see if I can pull that out of there somehow. How is that held in there? I think I need a hook. I'm going to go grab a hook. And I better grab me something to hold that because that is a tiny little part. So let's see, here's a hook. Let's pull that out. There it is. So that is a tiny little thing. We'll put it right there. Okay, so remove that. So I can remove that and remove that. So there, that piece is out. I'm going to set it right there. Uh, let's see. If the carburetor is equipped with a vacuum choke diaphragm, proceed as follows. I don't have one of those. Remove the clip from the choke operating link and disengage the link from the diaphragm plunger stem and the choke lever. Refer to figure one. So they're saying remove the choke lever. Let's see, what was that again? Remove the clip from the choke operating link and disengage the link from the diaphragm plunger. Is it this thing? This thing. How do you get that off of there? Are they talking about this spring here? Maybe they're talking about that spring, huh? Remove the clip from the... Maybe I need to clean this off a little better. Because it's pretty filthy. So here's... I don't see anything there. I don't see a clip anywhere on the choke. All I see is the spring on the choke. And I thought they were saying take this. Remove the vacuum hose. I say remove the clip from the choke operating link. And disengage the link from the diaphragm plunger stem and the choke lever. Maybe that's on the vacuum ones. Remove the vacuum diaphragm. Okay. 
That isn't one of my steps. Okay, remove the fast idle cam link retaining clip on carburetors with automatic choke. I don't have that. Remove the air horn retaining spring. So I'm going to remove that gasket there because I don't think I need that anymore. I think this is the air horn retaining spring. Air horn. Remove the air horn retaining screws. Remove the fast idle cam link retaining clip and carburetors without a no. Remove. The air horn retaining screws. So I think they just want me to remove the air horn retaining screws at this point. I don't take that spring off yet. And that would be this one. This one. Since this is the air horn, these would be the retaining screws, right? That one. This one, which I cleaned already. And there appears to be one that you can't get to with this thing on there. Wait, maybe you can get to it. You just got to move things around a little bit. There we go. And then there's one right there. So it looks like there are six. One, two, three, four, five, six air horn retaining screws. And if I start over here by the by the choke that'll be the first one and it looks like it just lifts straight out come on and there's a little washer on there so I need to hold on to that thing okay and let's just remove these. Hopefully these are all pretty close to the same. We'll check them as we go. Ah, oh, this thing is so dirty. It's hard to clean. It's hard to get these screws out of here or bolts out of here. There it comes. There's the second one. So the first two look identical, and they're both over here by the choke. Filthy, filthy, filthy. There it comes. Ah, oh, there we go. That one looks identical also. 
So it looks like the four long ones that are that are near nearest the choke are all pretty close to the same. If I can get that one out of there. There it goes. There it comes. All right. Yep, all four of these are the same, and they are pretty much the same. Okay, so now let's take a look at these back two. I think these two are shorter. This one here on the on the I guess it would be the right side of the truck would be the one with the tag on it and that's a little shorter one we'll put that right there and I bet you this one is probably pretty close to the same thing just without the tag on it just with a washer yep so they all have little lock washers on them all right so now the choke now let's put this stuff back get back on there all right so now i should be able to do something here let's see remove the air horn retaining screws tilt the air horn toward the throttle lever far enough to disengage the fast idle cam link from the fast idle cam as shown in figure three so i need to Take this thing and tilt it far enough to pull that out. There it goes. Okay, so it kind of kind of has a little lock on it. Now, how does it get out of there? Okay, buddy, come on. All right, let's set this back down and clean this. Boy, it's easier, I think, just to take it off the bottom side. Yeah, just take it off of there. Because this thing here needs to whip all the way around to a place where you can't even get it to. So we'll let that sit. Okay, so that's supposed to be pretty much done there. Boy, did I completely move, move that around. Okay, so that sits like that. That was supposed to sit on there like that. Okay, back to where we were. Separate the main throttle bodies, discard all gaskets. So take that out. Throw this gasket away. I'm just going to be careful because I don't know what I got for gaskets. So I'm just going to hold. Be careful with that. So the first one looks like that. And it's like that. Okay. Separate the main throttle body. Okay, and remove this gasket too. So this one is on the bottom. And it sits like that. So now we have the throttle body. We have the main body. And we have the choke body. Okay. So that is all like that. All right. Disengage the accelerator pump plunger from the rocker arm. 
So now I think we're just on to this piece here. We need to disengage this from that. How does that work? We gotta get rid of some of the gunk off of there, huh? Alright, how the hell are you supposed to do that? Okay, disengage the accelerator plump plunger from the rocker arm by pushing up on the bottom of the plunger and sliding the plunger shaft off the hook. Slide the plunger out of the air horn and remove the bowl vent valve spring seat and spring. If the old plunger can be used again or if the new plunger is to be installed, place a plunger in a jar of clean Vaseline or kerosene to prevent leather from drying out. Well, that leather is already dried out, and that's why I think this thing is failing. But how do I, how do I take that off of there? You're supposed to push up on that. It sure doesn't look like it comes off by pushing up on it. Hmm. I don't see how that's supposed to come off of there. And I could take it off by taking that screw out, maybe. That's probably going to be the easier way. Let's try that. There we go. Now I can take that off and put that back. So, <laughs> And we put this back where it came from, just so we don't lose it. All right, so there's the accelerator pump plunger thing. But I think that's, hopefully they gave me a new one in the kit. And then here's a little washer thing that goes on top of it. So I'm going to set that on it here. Hopefully I don't lose anything. Remove the fuel inlet needle valve seat and the gasket from the main body. So well, that would be in this part. So something in the main body. Fuel inlet needle valve. 
Where would that be? I wish they would have showed a picture of where that is. Oh, there's some gunk in here. Oof. That's some stuff that needs to probably be cleaned out. That's probably why this thing didn't run for shit. Okay, so... Fuel inlet metering valve. Is that this stuff here? Here's the float. We'll take the float and set it aside over here because I do not know when or where that's supposed to come into play. And while I'm at it, I'm going to dump some of that crap out. Ooh, there's a ball. Where did that come from? Well, here's a little bitty bowl that fell out when I dumped out the gasoline that was in the bottom of the bowl. I'm thinking it might have been right down in there. Underneath the accelerator pump. Probably right, well, maybe. I don't know. Let's take a look at that. Nope, didn't go there. I don't know where that ball went. Let's see. What else am I going to do? What next? All right. Uh, remove the fuel inlet needle valve seat and gasket from the main body. Fuel inlet needle valve. Is that this thing? Yeah. Okay, here, let me go get my 9 16th wrench and I'll pull that off. What next? Lift out the full float and fulcrum. Huh, okay. That must have been what that was all about. Okay, I'm guessing. Lift out the float, float, float fulcrum pin retainer. These lift out of the floats of the fulcrum pin. Remove the step-up piston retaining screws and slide the step-up piston and rod out of the well. Now lift out the step-up piston spring and the step-up piston gasket. It would be nice if they'd show a picture of what that was, because I don't know what the step-up spring is. I'm guessing it's this thing over here, or is it something over there? Huh, good question. I have no idea. They're telling me to do stuff and they don't tell me what the thing is. They don't give me a picture of what the hell they're talking about. All right, I'm going to take a break here and uh, take a look at things in a bit. Okay, so I uh, did a little studying. Luckily, the uh, new kit comes with a better diagram of what all the parts are and what their names are. 
Uh, first thing that uh, did two things out of order. Before I removed the float, I should have removed the valves. The the what's it called? The uh, fuel inlet needle valve seat and the gasket from the main body. So this is something that uh, it wasn't right because when I pulled this out, there was no gasket and there was no valve. So this thing was just dumping gas in. So that's probably why when I was first pouring gas into this thing, the gas was coming through where the accelerator pump was coming out. So luckily the new kit has one. So uh, thank God, because otherwise I'd be missing it. Then I got on to the next thing, removing the step-up piston. That's this thing here. <laughs> so, uh, if you're curious what a step-up piston is, that's they're, they're talking to this thing. Uh, they want you to remove this screw. So I'm going to take that out. So that has kind of a little step in it. And I'll put that in there. Then I'm going to remove the piston. There's a little spring thing that goes in there too. I'm going to set that in this little container over here. Then there's a spring that goes with that. And is there anything else I got to pull out? and the piston gasket from the bottom of the well. So there's something that's supposed to be down in the bottom of there. I don't see anything down there. Huh. It's supposed to be a piston gasket at the bottom of that well. I don't see anything down there. So, hmm, good question. Uh, let's see, remove the main metering jet and gasket as shown in figure four. So main metering jet is here. No. This is the idle orifice tube. I don't, oh, is it way down there? So I think they're talking about this thing way down here. So they're showing in the picture that it's much higher than that. So let's take that out. Well, that's that piece right there. Oh, and there's a little gasket on there. So I'm going to set that in here. Okay, what's the next step? Unscrew and remove the idle orifice tube as shown in figure 5. So that is this piece right there. And that looks like that. We'll set it in here. Okay, invert the carburetor and drop out the accelerator pump check balls from the respective seats. So, there's supposed to be some balls in there, but there's nothing coming out. So, not sure what they're talking about there, but that was missing from this carburetor. Using a tool, da 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 da, plug remover, remove the accelerator pump jet plug using tool, da 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 da, remove the accelerator pump jet as shown in figure six. So now they want me to remove the accelerator pump jet, which is this thing right here. And there's supposed to be a tool for removing that.
wonder what that tool is supposed to look like. I'm thinking a pair of needle nose. Let's tr give that a shot. Or is it just going to be a screwdriver? Let's just try that first. Yeah, it looks like it's going to pull up just by using a screwdriver. Ah, look at that. It comes out. So that piece came out just like that. We'll set that right there. And then there's supposed to be something inside of there. Oh yeah, let's see if the screwdriver will fit. Nope, this is a little bit too big. I'm gonna have to get a little bit smaller screwdriver. And it looks like I can get to it like this. Oh yeah, look at that. And then you can see it's spinning right there and coming out. And that part looks like that. And we'll set that right in here next to that piece. Okay. Let's see. Unscrew and remove the idle mixture adjusting screw and spring. So the idle adjust idle mixture adjusting screw and spring. I think that's that one. Wait, I think they said that you're supposed to go in. You're supposed to see how many it goes in and then come back out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven half turns. And then we take that back out. So we've got to remember that seven half turns. So three and a half turns to know how far to bring that back out. And that piece is just coming out now. Okay. We'll set that aside there. There we go. Looks like the carburetor now has been disassembled into three main units, namely air horn, main body, and throttle body. And the component parts of each disassembled as far as necessary for cleaning and inspection. It is usually not advisable to remove throttle shaft or valve from the throttle body unless wear or damage necessitates the installation of new parts. Cleaning the carburetor parts. Recommended solvent or gum deposits is is denatured alcohol which is easily obtainable however there are other commercial solvents which may be used for satisfactory results the choke diaphragm can be damaged by solvents avoid placing diaphragm in any liquid really so the choke diaphragm Hmm. Now we'll see. Uh, it can be damaged by any solvents. Avoid placing the diaphragm or any assembly in any liquid. 
clean the external surfaces with a clean cloth or a soft wire brush, shake dirt or other foreign material from the stem plunger side of the diaphragm. Depressing the stem to the retracted position will provide an additional hole for removal of dirt. Compressed air can be used to remove loose dirt, but should not be connected to a vacuum diaphragm fitting. Oh, that's for the vacuum choke. I don't have that. Uh, important, it is commercial solvent or cleaner recommends the use of water as a rinse. It should be hot. After rinsing, all trace of water must be blown from the passages with air pressure. It is further advisable to rinse all parts in clean kerosene or gasoline to be certain no trace or of moisture remains. Never clean jets with a wire drill or other mechanical means because orifices can, be, can become enlarged, making the mixture too rich for the proper performance. Okay, so now I suppose next up is clean this crap, and it's filthy. So I'm using a brass bristled brush and some carburetor and choke cleaner. And just scrubbing. I don't have any of those fancy things like they use with the, the Hydro Sonic or whatever scrubbers. Otherwise, I'd throw them in there, I guess, and try to clean it. But I'm doing this old school, I guess. Probably going to have to buy more of this because this thing is filthy. You know, I could probably take this off and make my life a little bit easier for cleaning.
Well, maybe I should give me one of those cleaner things. Probably get all this gunk off of there because this thing is nasty. Well, okay. I don't know if you guys all want to watch me just clean the carburetor, but uh, it's pretty filthy. But it's getting a little better. I uh, guess I'll uh, talk to you later when I come back to reassemble. Bye.